You are a super organism. While that sounds incredibly awesome in science fiction, what it actually means is possibly even cooler. You are a single organism that is made up of billions of other organisms. And of course, those organisms are bacteria, your microbiome. These are not all bad. In fact, a huge number of the 500 to 1,000 different species found in the human body are incredibly important for our health, performance, and even brain function. It's a well-known fact at this point that the human body contains more bacterial cells than human cells, and the same goes for your DNA. You contain roughly 100 trillion bacteria, which is a lot. You are more bacteria than human. This is what we're referring to when we discuss the microbiome or the microbiota, which has a slightly narrower definition. And those bacteria aren't just freeloaders. They play crucial symbiotic roles in the body, which are so important as to be a key part of who we are. In fact, our own cells are made partly from ancient bacteria, in a sense. Our mitochondria, the energy factories of our body, are actually evolved from an ancient alpha proteobacteria more than 3.5 billion years ago. This explains why our mitochondria contain entirely different sets of DNA as compared with the rest of our cells. What's more exciting from a performance point of view is that the microbiota of the gut specifically has a huge impact on your mood, your metabolism, your cardiovascular performance, your intelligence, and more. This has led to the gut sometimes being referred to as the second brain. The potential impact of the microbiome on weight loss is also particularly potent. In one case study, a woman received a fecal transplant, which is a transplant of fecal matter from one person to another, from her overweight relative to treat a serious health condition. While the transplant was a success and the illness was halted in its tracks, she soon began to notice that her body was different. The now healthy recipient of the foreign feces, and thus foreign bacteria, began to gain weight, and nothing she could do would help her to control it. More exciting still is that bacteria could directly influence muscle mass formation. In one study, researchers transplanted the gut bacteria from wild mice into mice that had been raised to entirely lack a gut microbiota which led to a marked increase in muscle mass and a reduction in muscular atrophy. In fact, a person's microbiome, which is far more unique from one person to another than their DNA, can potentially be used as one of the best indicators of body composition and even athletic performance. If you're struggling to lose weight then, build muscle or focus, it might be because your microbiome is negatively affecting your metabolism. Meanwhile, a whole field of psychobiotics is concerned with exploring the use of beneficial bacteria in improving mood and focus. Essentially, this is using probiotics as nootropics. So how do bacteria do all this? Well, they're able to affect many processes in the body through a range of different methods. Firstly, they produce digestive enzymes to help break down foods and aid digestion. This helps with the absorption of nutrients and therefore supports overall health. They produce neurotransmitters, which affect the network of neurons lining the gut and impact on our mood, our focus, and more. They boost the immune system by fighting bad bacteria in the gut, and they're even able to talk to the mitochondria via cellular signaling owing to that shared common ancestry. This can improve energy production as bacteria produce short-chain fatty acids, SFCAs, called butyrate, that can be burned by the mitochondria to create ATP, providing more energy. Butyrate also affects gene expression in muscle and brown fat and encourages fatty oxidation via AMPK. Well, this is all very interesting, but it's not terribly actionable. What can we do to improve our gut microbiome and thus our body composition, brain function, and athletic performance? In the book Peak, Dr. Mark Bubbs collects a huge amount of relevant data on this point, as well as useful tips and advice. In the article linked in the description of this video, I'll list a bunch of bacterial strains that have been studied for their effects on brain and body. I list them all there and I explain what each appears to do for either brain or body. Check that out if you want to create your own microbiome diet. This information has been collected by looking at the guts of hunter-gatherer tribes in Tanzania, as well as the guts of high-performance athletes. Other studies involve introducing microbe strains into the diets of participants via probiotics and other means to see what effect they have on mood, performance, or weight gain. From all this, we can begin to paint a picture of what a healthy diet might look like with regards to supporting gut health. It should be high fiber and contain fermented foods, dairy, and starch. Athletes with healthy microbiomes ate large quantities of vegetables, fruits, and nuts and steered more towards whole grain breads. Dirt can even improve your microbiome, so don't wash those organic vegetables too thoroughly. Another obvious option is to try and use probiotic products to enhance your gut health. These are yogurts, tablets, and drinks that contain large amounts of bacterial cultures. So do they work? Do they actually do what they promise? Well, the good news is that some studies do seem to show an effect. 
These are currently quite limited in scope and number right now, however, and most conclude that it's too early to draw concrete conclusions. When choosing a probiotic, if you do choose to go that route or a supplement, you should focus on the CFU count. CFU stands for Colony Forming Unit, which tells you just how many live and active microorganisms are found in a serving. Most products range between 5 to 30 billion CFU, so aim for 30 if possible. Generally, more is better. But you also need to read which strains are actually in the product and whether these have been shown to do anything useful. Try to avoid simple sugars, acellular carbs, and highly processed foods, which provide a ready source of fuel for the inflammation promoting bad bacteria. But Dr. Bubbs warns against falling into the trap of a reductionist approach. You can't control your bacteria precisely enough to try and raise specific quantities of microbes. And each of us has such a unique microbiome that the same approach isn't going to work for everyone. A better strategy is to be generally healthy and to listen to your own body. Indeed, by far the most important property of a healthy gut biome, according to all the research, is diversity. The greater the range of bacteria, the more balanced it will be. Try to think of this like maintaining an organic garden. The best way to get rid of aphids is not to spray them with a chemical insecticide, but rather to attract ladybirds to your garden and build a stronger ecosystem. The same is true of your gut, and by having a broad range of bacteria in there, you'll be healthier, you'll achieve a better balance. It's a curious thought that actually it isn't in the best interest of any bacteria to kill its host. Some have suggested that this is proof that those strains of bacteria are in the early stages of evolution, or that their negative effects are more the result of imbalances. Either way, it seems that no bacteria is truly evil. And this is where our modern lifestyles can actually be beneficial. Head to your local supermarket and stock up on natural whole food that has been imported from as many different countries as possible. You could also try following the 50 food challenge, which involves trying to consume 50 different foods in seven days each week. Dr. Bubbs recommends that if you suffer from low energy, bloating, poor mood or uncontrolled weight gain, that you first try using a restrictive diet in order to cut back the bacteria that's already there. So that actually means reducing fibre intake and eating only very simple and bland foods for a while, while also seeking out antimicrobial foods and supplements, such as garlic. This helps to trim back the overgrowth, allowing you to effectively start over. Once your symptoms have settled down, you can then begin to build your gut flora back up by introducing those more varied and complex ingredients. Many factors outside of your diet also affect gut health. Good sleep is also key to a healthy gut. Perhaps surprisingly, your microbiome also has a sleep-wake cycle just like you. So if you don't sleep, you can actually cause damage to your friendly micro-allies. Just as the microbiome is able to aid the performance of your mitochondria, it also transpires that the reverse is true. Optimally functioning mitochondria also help to support a healthy microbiome. Thus, fitness training and especially high intensity interval training could help to boost your microbiome. Overtraining, however, can be extremely bad for your gut health, as can any form of stress. Gut-brain axis is an important area of study looking at the interaction between the gut health and stress. Our microbiota communicates with our brain via the vagus nerve, as well as via the immune system, tryptophan metabolism, SCFAs, gut hormone signaling, and more pathways. This interaction is a kind of two-way street, and if you experience a lot of chronic stress, it can take a serious toll on your gut. Only use antibiotics as a last resort, as they take a scorched earth approach to the fight against bad bacteria, and can completely eliminate your healthy gut flora. It may take over a year for this to grow back. If you do need antibiotics, then make sure to spend time rebuilding and monitoring your gut health immediately afterwards. So don't go crazy and spend too much time worrying about all this, but just being aware of it can help to make healthier choices and to feel better as a result. That's basically how you support a healthy microbiome to improve your health, wellness, energy, focus, muscle mass, weight loss, and more. Let me know down below if this is something you already do or if you plan to reconsider your diet in light of this information. I hope you found this video useful and interesting. If you did, then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Likewise, subscribe to the channel if you want more like this, and don't forget to check out the article over at thebioneer.com. Before you guys go, I just want to let you know that I'm finally working on a book that takes all of the information from the Bioneer, the channel and the website and combines it into a single tome, a huge comprehensive guide to the brain and body and the unique and interesting ways you can train it, hack it and get the most out of it. Lots of people who comment on this channel say that they like all the information but they don't know how to combine it all into one actionable plan. So that's exactly what this book is going to do whilst also exposing a ton of other fascinating areas of research that I haven't had time yet to cover here. The book's called Super Functional Training. It's going to be a really big and well-presented PDF with lots of images, lots of flowcharts and diagrams, which will not only outline and explain the training you need to do to 
optimize your body and mind in a single program, but also hopefully motivate you and get you really fascinated and excited to get the most out of your body. If that all sounds interesting, then you can actually pre-order that right now following the link in the description down below. And if you do, then you'll get $10 off the final price. It's going to be $35 on release, which might change, I don't know. It's going to be $25 right now if you pre-order though. And you'll also gain access to some exclusive content if you do that. Thanks a ton to everyone who's already ordered their copy. And yeah, I'll share more information about it as we go on this channel. I'm really excited for it. Oh, and it releases on November the 4th this year. A ton for watching guys and stay tuned for the next one. I'll see you then. Bye for now.